Father Michael Orsi. I am your host for Action for Life Television, that good news program which brings you the big G for the gospel of Jesus Christ and the little G, all the good things that people do to put that gospel of life into action. That, that's the name of our show, Action for Life. Now, we have two lovely ladies who uh, are for action, especially when it comes to the unborn and pregnant women. And sometimes, you know, well, things happen and uh, women get pregnant and they go into uh, Panicsville. What do I do now? I wasn't expecting to get pregnant. And sometimes it happens to married women too, or people who are just cohabiting. You see, I can't give you at the moment a lesson in the birds and the bees. All right. But you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Now, when somebody, you know, starts to hit the panic button, what do I do now? Where do I go? I need to get my head straight. Well, we have a wonderful organization called Pregnancy Resource Center. And the director is Nicole Shank. And she has her development director with her. Now, what is the name of your... Director of Development. Laura Ross is with me as well today. Okay, so that's Laura. And uh, I guess, um, is this an appeal for money, Laura? <laughs> All right, we'll get you some anyway. We'll get you some anyway. Okay, so I want everybody to pay close attention to this program because it's not just, you know, counseling for women who find themselves uh pregnant. Uh, un you get that term, unwanted pregnancy. Ah, I would hate to think, you know, if I were a, a child growing up that, you know, I was unwanted. They help the mother to want the child and then help the mother get her life in order. And even there is some uh, medical advice given. Also, there is material goods given to help the mother raise the child, like stuff like, you know, food and, uh, and diapers and, and all of those things that, you know, that, that babies need. So, Nicole, I want you to explain to our audience, well, what, what exactly, I, I, I probably said it all already, but you tell me uh, what's going on uh, over there. You are in Estero, correct? Estero? Yeah, our admin offices are in Estero, so that's where we are today. But our two clinics, we have uh, one located in Naples, which is on the corner of Collier Boulevard and Immokalee. And then our second clinic is located off of Plantation Road up in uh, Fort Myers. Okay, that's wonderful. Boy, you have your work cut out there in Fort Myers with that Planned Parenthood committing the crime of abortion, don't you? We sure do, and we're within a half mile of Planned Parenthood. Wonderful. Okay, so... I'm sure some of the people going into uh, Planned Parenthood get redirected to you. Exactly. There's a lot of sidewalk counselors there that have our cards. And so they are able to connect with some of the women that are wanting to walk into Planned Parenthood for an abortion. And they're able to share that there is another option for them that is just down the street. And they'll oftentimes hand them our Pregnancy Resource Center card and they will get in their car and drive right over and walk into our clinic. And then we're able to share with them, you know, the truth of the situation and share with them options, which is exactly the opposite of what Planned Parenthood will try to do. Of course, they're going to, you know, show them that abortion is the best way. And uh, and they do not show them on the big, big screen TV a picture of their baby when they do the ultrasound, whereas we have big screen TVs on our walls. And one of the main things we'll do is show them that this is not just a clump of cells, you know, that this truly is a baby and so we'll point out you know the head and the arms and the legs and and that this is a little baby that's moving and and we'll show them the little heartbeat and so we really want to communicate to them that I want to yes, ask you a question a uh you're working closely with the sidewalk advocates right correct okay yep. so how do you interact with them so that they can get the information they have little cards that they hand them to people as they they walk as they drive in or walk into Planned Parenthood? How does that operate? 
Yeah. Do you want to share a little bit about that, Laura? Yeah. So we we definitely um, communicate with the, the sidewalk counselors. We have uh, little business size type cards that we will give them um, either at the Luncheons for Life, which is a monthly meeting for a lot of pro-life kind of light minded people. Uh, in fact, we're going tomorrow. Um, but then we also just know them through emails or just in communications from Action for Life or other events that we have met them and um, we and say- And then the little card says, hey, if you go over to the Pregnancy Resource Center, we can help you to do blank, 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 fill in the blanks for me. Exactly, free ultrasound, because everything that they receive at Planned Parenthood, they have to pay out of pocket for. And a lot of these women are lower income, right? Not so wait, all- wait, 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 run this by old father O again. They go over to Planned Parenthood, which is like being funded by Mucho Dinero from Uncle Joe in Washington, and they still have to pay for services. Correct. Oh, oh they. <laughs> hey, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, do you see the hypocrisy in all of this? These ladies are doing things for free out of the goodness of their heart, out of the charity of people who recognize the sanctity of human life. In the meantime, your taxpayer dollars are going to support Planned Parenthood, support abortion, and guess what? It's your money that's doing it. It's probably in that uh, omnibus uh, budget, you know, $1.7 trillion that nobody read. I mean, Folks, don't let me get started. Okay, please continue. <laughs> so we are able to offer all of our services for free to them because of donors, because we don't receive any government funding. And so uh, churches will support us, individuals will support us. And so we can let these women know, you can go to Planned Parenthood and pay for a pregnancy test, pay for an ultrasound, pay for the doctor's appointment, or and pay for STI testing, or you can come over to the Pregnancy Resource Center. We will do all of that for free. We'll confirm your pregnancy because that is one thing that needs to get done is before, you know, if she wanted to continue on with her abortion, she needs to have a pregnancy test, confirm that you're pregnant. And then you need to know how far along she is because that will determine if she were to continue on to get an abortion, what type of abortion, whether it's medical or whether it's a, um, you know, whether she's going to take the pill um, or is it too far along to have an abortion? So she needs to know how far along she is. So an ultrasound will confirm how far along she is in that pregnancy. And then she can see the doctor or the nurse for free at our clinic. You have a doctor? And you have a doctor there? How does we this do work? have Dr. Dr. Trandum is our medical director. Oh, I know yeah. her. She's a friend of mine. <laughs> That's Carice so, Trandum. She's just fantastic. A brilliant OB-GYN. Yeah. Yes. Oh, she absolutely is wonderful, brings a lot of validity. Um, you know, one of the things that the other side likes to share is that we are a fake clinic, and that could not be further from the truth. We are a medical clinic. We hire lots of registered nurses, and uh, we have sonographers, as well as Dr. Shandam has limited days that she'll be there in the clinic, uh, but we are a medical clinic, so we do a lot of education. And again, that is what they will not get at Planned Parenthood. Um, so we just say we want to provide truthful information. We want to let you know all of the facts that if you go ahead and have this abortion, you know, here are all of the physical risks that you um, are putting yourself through. Uh, here's the emotional risks that you're going to go through. And so we want to just let her know that this is not just a one and done decision. There are going to be lasting effects physically and emotionally mm -hmm. that you're going to go through. And we would love to save her from that and save that baby. You know, I always have to get a, 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 a I, I get a laugh, but I, maybe I should get a cry of a Planned Parenthood saying that we supply services for women's health. They're supplying services to kill babies. That's what they're doing. A very limited amount of their uh, uh, activities is being directed toward anything else. Am I right or am I wrong on this? Very right. true. Very Say that. True. Father O is always right. How many years have we been together and I've never been wrong yet? 
All right, continue. Now, I want to ask you another question. All right. So uh, they come, they can go to a doctor. Uh, they have uh, nursing, uh, if they need nursing. Uh, you have the, uh, the sonogram, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, mm -hmm. look, folks, you got to go see one of these sonograms, like uh, looking at a real baby in the womb. It, it really, I think I told you this once before, it blew my socks off. I couldn't believe it. They had them in 3D. <laughs> Holy cow. And I'll tell you something. Any woman who sees that, or any father, let me say, any father that sees that, they're not going to go through with the abortion. Believe me. So I want you to be generous to these folks. You know, these sonograms, uh, they're not cheap. They cost a lot of money, don't they? Like uh, thousands and thousands? Mm -hmm. All the right, so Laura, machine. tell me how many thousands and thousands the, the, the one of these machines cost. Make up 40, a number. 40. Make up like a fifty thousand. Fifty thousand dollars, sir. How much? Fifty thousand dollars. I told sir. you, fifty thousand. <laughs> They're a lot of money. I mean, I'm not being you know exaggerating. They are a lot. Of, somebody, you know, somebody should you know go online and look it up, and then make out a big check and send it to them. Okay, Pregnancy Resource Center, because they could open up more locations and save more babies. All right, now, you go through all this, the girl comes in and says, oh my gosh, that's a real live baby in there. Uh, then you say, okay, next step is you go see the doctor, go see the nurse. What do you do then? Yeah, so kind of the process when she first steps foot into the um, into the clinic, we're going to have our receptionist greet greet them, and we've already started our day in prayer. So we know that in our own power, we cannot do this work, right? We need the power of God working in and through our people, and so we start the day in prayer. When they're welcomed, they are welcomed warmly, right? They know instantly. Oftentimes, our patients will say, "There's something." Different different. Like when they're in our clinic, there's something different. Well, the different, the difference is that God is there with our patients. God is there with our, with our staff. We've invited him in. And so they feel a sense of love from the moment they walk in. Then we also have a team of volunteers called advocates. And these are women that just generously give their time. They go through training, but that is actually who's going to sit down with the patient first. And they're just going to ask them a series of questions to kind of learn where they're at in life, like what brought them to this point where they do have an unplanned pregnancy and they're thinking that there's no way they can go through with it. So we need to just kind of understand who she is. So our advocate will take the time to ask those questions and develop rapport with her. And then the nurse will come in and that will, that will bring a whole medical uh, side, professional side of things to it. And she'll begin getting their medical background and then if they need to see the doctor, um, we'll make sure that at some point she can meet with the doctor either that day or we'll bring them back. All of our nurses are now currently getting trained as sonographers so that they know how to do work the sonography machine, um, or we'll have a sonographer there to perform the ultrasound. And then in the midst of all this, we're doing the pregnancy test. We're educating them about their options because they initially think the only option is an abortion. And so we want to open their eyes to show them, actually, if you you want to choose to parent this baby because like you said once they see that moving baby on the screen a lot of times they they want to keep that baby but they just can't see any way forward financially usually finances are the biggest issue for them okay let's let's talk so, about that so they say yeah. oh yeah that is a baby and i don't want an abortion but i i don't have any money uh help me what do you tell them then yeah. So we let them know that our baby boutique and education center, we call that next steps. Okay. Our clinics are called aspire women's clinic. And then next steps is our education and baby boutique. And so we let them know that if they want to choose to parent, they can earn every single thing that they need for that baby over the next nine months, because we have generous individuals and churches that donate brand 
new items mm-hmm. for that baby. And so when they go to our baby boutique, they will see brand new strollers, car seats, clothes, diapers, wipes, everything that they need. But we don't want to just give it to them, right? We're not going to hand everything out to them. We want them to earn it. And so what we ask them to do is, will you come in and meet with one of our advocates every single week for one hour. And what we're going to do during that hour is we're going to develop a relationship with them. We're going to continue to invest in them, learn who they are, what support needs do they have. A lot of these women don't have a mom or don't have a grandma or don't have a a husband or a partner that's going to support them. So our volunteer advocate will meet with them up to 15 months. So even after they have the baby, Mm -hmm. we're saying we still want to walk alongside you. And so these advocates, We'll educate them and watch videos on childbirth, um, parenting. A lot of times they didn't have a very good parent to show them what is it like to be a good parent. So they'll watch videos and and talk with their advocate on parenting. Mm -hmm. Um, If they want to, um, maybe they've never heard about who Jesus is, who God is. And so we want to share our faith with them. Imagine producing this wonderful program, Action for Life. It costs a great deal of money. We're going to need your help. So if you would like to donate to keep this good news program on the air, please, please go to your computer, your cell phone, actionforlife.net. Thought for the day, I hope that all of you belong to a Christian community. Going to church is extremely important. Why? Because we need the support of other people in order for us to live a good Christian life. Christianity is a community religion. Please worship in your church this weekend. Hey gang, I know a lot of you sometimes can't watch all of our episodes of Action for Life. However, we have a solution for that. All you have to do is go to YouTube and search for Action for Life Florida. And you can catch up on all the shows and guess what? Extra added bonus, you get to hear my weekly homily. So YouTube and you make a fine couple. Let's talk about that. You know, you said your organization is based on faith in God and you, you pray every morning before you open up shop and then you have these women come in and maybe some of them, you know, are religious people. Maybe some of them aren't. So how do you broach that conversation? I mean, you know, they're thinking of going to Planned Parenthood, first of all. And for certain, there uh, is no great belief in God over there. All right? You greet them in a loving, warm Christian environment. Planned Parenthood, it's all business. Just uh, get the abortion, hop on the table, and get out. All right? I, yeah. I hate to be this blunt, folks, but this is what it's like. It's a business. It's just a business. They don't give a, I can't say it on television, about the person, the woman, the baby, or anything, or anything. And they're getting paid big money to do it. This organization is not getting a nickel from Uncle Joe. But they're doing God's will. And that's why they're being blessed by God. That's why the development is doing So, well, and after this show, you're even going to do better because I just heard that the sonogram is now up to over $100,000 inflation. Thank you, Uncle Joe. Go ahead. (laughs) So we asked their permission because you're right. They come in. They're thinking they're here for a medical appointment, not to talk about spiritual matters. But what we do about 
45 minutes or so into their appointment, while we're waiting for the pregnancy test to be run, we ask their permission. We will say something to them like, you know, this pregnancy affects you on a physical level. We've already kind of addressed that um, on an emotional level, but it also affects you on a spiritual level. And would you be open while we're running that pregnancy test for the next five to seven minutes? Would you be open to just talking about spiritual matters? So we get their permission first. And then the advocate kind of takes the lead, you know, she assesses the situation and asks them about their faith. Um, do they have a faith in God? Um, do they go to church? And then that kind of opens the door. And then do you want to just share a little bit about in education, maybe how a spiritual conversation would take place or how they grow in their walk with the Lord? In the um, education. So Father Orsi, when they choose life for their baby, we will walk with them for 15 months, like Nicole just mentioned, and they will meet with us every single week with their advocate, who is the same person. They have developed a relationship with them. Um, and uh, basically they will will come every week to do the parenting classes, learn more. Um, but during that time, we'll also pray with them. And, you know, we'll find out what, what's happening at home. What are their needs? How can we help them? Um, uh, every week that they're there, not only are we doing the parenting classes and um, praying with them, but we're, they're also earning things called baby bucks. And the baby bucks, uh, Father Orsi, will help them in the baby boutique. That will uh, They'll be able to buy the car seat, the stroller, the crib, anything that these moms need to bring the baby home is supplied for them. Um, this is like, they, see, folks, this is holistic. This is not just when you go over to old Planned Parenthood and, you know, like, uh, I got to watch my language. You know, they just... Well, you know, I'm sorry to say it, but they, it's all it's just like a, a crude business function, all right? They don't care about the woman's psychological health, the spiritual, forget about that altogether. But you see what's going on over here? It's the physical well-being, it's the material well-being, mother and child, and the spiritual well-being, because you got to bring Almighty God into the picture, because God is the one that's going to direct that person's life, not just through the pregnancy, but for the rest of their life with God on their side and on the side of their child, life can be very, very successful. On the other hand, you go over to Planned Parenthood and uh, you know, you're know you going to be on the same, the same track over and over and over again. There is no end to it. And I, I guess what, what they eventually would, um, would suggest is sterilization, but that kind of puts them out of business. Ladies, I mean, where am I right with this stuff? Say yes. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, because a lot of times this is not necessarily their first pregnancy. They already have a couple of kids and sometimes with different fathers. So you're right. Like we want to change the trajectory of their future, right? Like we don't want to just save this one baby. We obviously do want to save that baby, but we also want to help transform their life and have mm -hmm. God transform their life, their value system, their morals. And you, you can only do that by introducing God into the conversation. And so many times it is the first time they're hearing about God and about Jesus. And so these advocates, you know, walk closely with the Lord and they will do a Bible study, you know, with these, with these women. And then our ultimate goal at the end, you know, after they've delivered baby and they're, they're on their feet, they're eventually going to stop coming in weekly and meeting with their advocate. But the advocate's goal is that then to introduce them to church. And so that that can introduce them to the whole new community of people that can embrace them. Well, what do you so do? I mean, I want to ask you a question about this. You say you try to get them to go to church. Well, do you have like a whole bunch of uh, cards that say, uh, go to this church, go to that church? Uh, well, how do you figure out where to send them? You know, a lot of times it'll be... Um, location, depending on where they where they live. But if they live anywhere near where the advocate goes to church, they've already developed a close relationship mm -hmm. with them. And so a lot of times they'll go to church where the advocate is going. Um, there is an organization out there called Embrace Grace. And Embrace Grace is already in many of our churches. And that is for single moms. And there's actually a, a group, you know, how at churches, a lot of times you can be like, okay, if you're 
between ages 20 and 30, go to this, go to this group on Sundays, or if you're um, a senior, you know, in 60s to 70s to 80s, go to this group. But where do single moms go when they go to church? They need to feel welcomed. They need to feel like there's a group where they fit in. And Embrace Grace does just that. And so that is something we've learned about new this past year. And so some of the churches are starting to offer Embrace Grace groups. And so that's an easy way for us to say to these single moms, you know what, if you go to this church, they actually have an Embrace Grace group. You're going to meet other women and moms in your situation. They're expecting a baby. They don't have a significant other that's going to walk alongside them. And we found there's a lot of women in the church that want to love on these women, that want to walk them through a Bible study. And so it's just a nice way to bridge them. That, that, you know, it's church. wonderful. It's wonderful. You, you have these advocates that take them to church. You know, there's nothing better, folks, than, you know, it's like having a I can't, uh, a, a, a godmother or, you know, or maybe a godfather uh, that, that's going to, you know, walk along with you in your life of faith and introduce you into the life of a church community. But I, I really like this idea, embrace grace. Uh, how do churches uh, establish this? What, what, tell me what goes on. That way, some of you churches out there maybe should consider it. embrace grace. Go ahead. Please tell us. Yeah, Embrace Grace is fabulous. Do you want to share a little bit more, Laura? So, Father Orsi, it's easy. They can go on embracegrace.com and sign up to uh, become a, a host church. Um, and then as the girls are, are finding themselves in unplanned pregnancies and coming to the Pregnancy Resource Center, um, they, they will learn more about what churches are available that are offering these Bible studies or that are welcoming um, Embrace Grace girls. That, yeah. you know, that's fantastic. You know, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, you know, having a sponsor to walk the walk with you, especially in, in walk the walk of faith with you is so important. That role modeling is so important. And there are many great churches in our area, many great churches in our area. But if you find a place that, you know, this has this embrace great, I mean, I don't know much about it, but we're going to find out more about it. And maybe we'll have somebody from Embrace Grace come and talk to us uh, sometime in the future. But this is one of the things that's necessary, that support group, people that are going through the same kind of experience or have gone through the same kind of experience and they can lift up other people to walk along with them into a happy, healthy pregnancy and a good life with the child that comes from that pregnancy. Hey, ladies, I want to thank you. You've been great. God bless you. You're for action. I'm for action. And I know you are too. We would like to thank our generous sponsors for their wonderful support. Thanks for watching. Please join us next time for Action for Life. I'm for action and I hope you are too. I'm Father Michael Orsi. I am your host for Action for Life Television, that good news program which talks about the gospel of Jesus Christ, the big G and the little G, all the good things that people are doing to put the gospel of life into action. So please join us for the next episode of Action for Life.